What's up, YouTubians? Gary here with VW Jawbreaker. Welcome to the channel. Got a rainy day today, so I figure let's yeah, not really worry too much about 60. Let's continue plugging along on Jawbreaker. What? Jawbreaker? What's going on with that? We'll find out right after the break. So if you watched the last video, I showed you how to set up some, what were they, 48 IDF Chinese clones? I don't even know. They look identical to the 48 IDFs. Identical to IDFs, period. There are just no stampings on them, which is interesting. So, today, what we're gonna do, is we're gonna take off the real Weber 44s and we're gonna put on these clone 48 IDFs on see how much better jawbreaker runs why am I doing that it's pretty simple honestly let me bust out the board all right I grabbed some new markers so hopefully this will work a little better for you but essentially You've got your carburetor. I know I'm not an artist, guys. Come on, we should know this by now. Air's flowing in, coming down through the Venturi. Venturi, right? It's called a Venturi effect. Because of the Venturi, it tapers in, brings everything through. Your Venturi needs to be three to six and a half millimeters smaller than the diameter of your intake valve. Okay? I'm running some huge CB044 Ultra Mag heads, 42 by 37 and a half valves. These things have humongous ports on them. Honestly, I need more air. To, ult to seriously get this thing to perform better, it needs more air. So technically with a 42 valve, and I need to be three to six and a half millimeters smaller, these 40 Venturis should be actually really good. If we look here at some numbers, a 40 IDF with a stock 29 millimeter Venturi will flow 212.8 CFM. Your 44 IDF will flow 292.3 with a 36 millimeter Venturi, comes stock. 48 IDF will flow 340.2 with the 40 millimeter Venturi. So you're asking me, dude, why are you going with 48 IDFs? instead of going with IDAs. Let me tell you, those IDAs are a sexy carburetor. I'm not gonna lie. But I'd have to change intakes. At $300 for the intakes to match my heads. Yeah, they're not cheap. New linkage, plus carburetors. I can up do this upgrade for $180, use the same intakes and same linkage. Kind of a no-brainer. But what's the difference flow-wise between an IDF and an IDA in a 48 millimeter. Glad you asked, let's take a look. So again, the 48 millimeter will flow 340.2 CFM. Your 48 IDA, the sexy beast, 348.6. You're not really looking that much difference in CFM between the two, but it's a huge jump in Venturi size. You're talking a four millimeter difference in Venturi size. I can't run those Venturis with my head, so I'd have to go and get specially made different Venturis for the ID8, 48 IDAs and choke it down. When with this, shoot, it's close enough. We should be good. Okay, let, let's, let's just say a worst case scenario. I'll still flow really well, but I could put my 36 millimeter Venturis into my 48 IDFs. Enough jibber jabber. Let's get to work, yank these carbs off, and really see what's going on. Let's get her done. All right, before we get started here, I had somebody a while back ask me about my removable deck lid. And honestly, it's pretty simple. You've got right here where the original pins went. Um, I took the brackets off and you take a punch, 
knock that pin out, take a quarter inch drill bit, use that to ream the hole a little bit, and then you can slide your pins through. I use a little weatherproof connector that's, oh, it's back here. It's back there, right there. A little weatherproof two pin connector for my tag light. So I just unplug the pin, two pins there, and deck lids off out of the way. Makes it so much easier to work. So that's how I do it. Now let's really get to work. Well, there we go. Carbs are off. They're sitting right over there on the intakes. And everybody keeps saying, wow, you know, you, you keep talking about these big ports, these big ports. Move the paper towel out of the way. See if I can get my camera down in there. You tell me those are not big ports. These things are massive. So time to finally put some carburetors on that should be on there. Let's get it. Let's do it. All right, so we've got the new 48 IDF onto the CB Big Beef intake manifolds. Now these are all the jet stacks, jets that came in those IDF clone carburetors. These we can reuse. These are just the jet stack holders and the idle jet holders. But until we can 100% verify that these jet sizes are proper, I'm not going to put them into use. I'm not sure if those uh, air jets, idle jets, and main jets are proper. The emulsion tubes, we don't use F2 emulsion tubes in Volkswagens. So those will just stick off to the side for God knows what. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the jet stacks out of the 44 right here 
put a nice pretty new motion or stack holder on it drop those in transfer over the idle jets we're going to try that worst case scenario i'll have to rejet it a tad but just curious to see where it's going to run with the 44 jets on these 48s so that's where we be all right so we're getting ready to do the same we've got Second carburetor off, we'll go ahead and pull the jet stacks, everything out of here, swap it over to the other carburetor over there. But I've had lots of people ask me, Gary, are those heads really that big? And to be honest with you, <clears throat> an IDF is an IDF is an IDF. This is pretty much going to be the same. I don't have another, you know, IDF manifold to show you, but I do have a stock manifold so we can compare openings down at the bottom so how can I get that to stand <laughs> never mind so there you go can you see that stock intake manifold right here stock and those are the wedge port ultra wedge port CNC heads that's the intake size difference I don't know about you, but that's massive. Not to mention, you can see my finger down there. I mean, these things are like straight shots. Well, there we go. 48 IDAs are on. There's my four paper towels from the intakes. Yes, I remember to pull those out. The only thing I have left to do is hook up the spark plug wires, and then we will also go ahead and get all of these 100% synced in, um, balanced the whole nine yards before we even hook up the throttle linkage. So that will be next and where we left off was we have it all set up ready to go uh, linkage is on just so we can get it fired up and warmed up once we do that we can go ahead and pop the linkage loose probably on this side the other side well it doesn't matter you can do one both whatever and we'll go ahead and start working on getting these carburetors synced and tuned in and see how she runs first up we need to verify there's no fuel leaks. So let's get on with that. Not seeing any kind of leaks or dampness or wetness anywhere, so that's a good sign. We got fuel pressure. I think we might be good to go. It's the nice thing about having an electric pump, is it don't take long at all to get the system primed up. Alright. Wheel. 
think it's time to go ahead and hit fire in the hole, get her warmed up. First you don't succeed, try, try again. She is currently off the charts lean. So off camera, I sprayed a little something, something on this side, sprayed a little something, something on that side. Can't really find it. Um, so I think I'll just go ahead and pull the intakes, verify that maybe, I don't know, maybe I actually tore a gasket or something. Wasn't hard to double check it. So we'll double check that. We'll bring you back. Hopefully we can start uh, sinking in these carburetors soon. Well guys, unfortunately things don't always work out as planned. So I verified I didn't have any vacuum leaks. We were good there. Then it started dawning on me. I have 42 millimeter intake valves with those massive heads and 40 millimeter Venturi's. It's a little too close. So what happened was I was actually losing some of the airspeed going through the carburetors because the Venturi was a little too big. Would be great if she was an all-out race engine or something like that, but I'm going to lose my download drivability. So I went ahead and pulled those off and put the 44 IDFs back on. Now the Venturi from a 40 and a 44 IDF can interchange, but a 40 and 44 Venturi will not fit in a 48. So essentially I would need to either get massively big jets to compensate, to try to get it to idle right and run right through the transition circuits, or buy smaller Venturi's. Could do that, but you know, you got a few things coming up here right now, and I just don't know if I really want to dive into that just yet. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the carburetors. I think we'll definitely look into this in the uh, distant future and, and, and kind of just pick it back up at some point and see where we go with it. So anyway, Never claimed to be an expert. Told you I'd bring you along, showing you my experiences. Guys, this is what I'm experiencing. So I appreciate you hanging out. Thanks for spending time with us today in the garage. Appreciate the support. And until the next time, be kind to one another and be good.